I love Veronica Mars. I think it's an absolutely brilliant show. It only had a short run of three seasons, and only two of which were actually watchable. The third season has sort of been written off as a fluke. There was a lot of problems with it, but I will save that for another video. That said, you should go out immediately and BitTorrent, pirate, rent, buy, whatever you have to do to watch Veronica Mars, because it will totally be worth it. It's a show about a teenage detective. She actually learned the tricks of the trade from her father, who's a private detective, and she often solves mysteries at school. She even solves crimes that the local sheriff's department is unable to solve. The show is actually really funny, it's got great wit, great humor, and I would actually compare it to Josh Whedon's writing in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and maybe even say it's a little bit better. Josh Whedon did a cameo during season two because he thought the show was so good. And so did Courtney from the Dandy Warhols and Kevin Smith. One of the things that immediately drew me into the show is how technologically savvy Veronica Mars is. It's a pretty rare representation to have young women shown as super knowledgeable about all sorts of different technologies. So you see her often using computers and having a really good understanding of how they work. She's also an excellent photographer, printer, scanners, all that sort of stuff. She also has a lot of uh, different spy gadgets. So she can take apart an iPod and put in a hidden camera that will take a photo every five seconds, for example, or track people through GPS or put recording devices in cars. There's also another teenage woman at Veronica's school named Mac who's also super tech savvy. Veronica met up with her because she needed some help with uh, the computer systems at school and Mac knew everything about them. So throughout the television series, she is constantly going to Mac asking her for help in how to break into Wi-Fi networks and how to create websites and hack into different things. And they work together as a pair on uh, various projects. Very little violence is used on the show to solve problems. But it's not a world without violence, so it kind of comes in two forms on the show. The first is really awkward and clumsy. So you'll have like two teenage boys beating each other up and throwing punches and kind of missing, but it's not like they're trained in martial arts, it's just really awkward. The second way shows how horrific and egregious violence actually is. It makes your stomach kind of turn as you're watching the show. I think that these characteristics and representations of violence on Veronica Mars really helps to show us how violence is used on other shows to solve problems, how easy it is to write violence as a solution as opposed to coming up with really creative ways to deal with different problems. Well, she's giving a statement at the sheriff's department tomorrow. I'll drop by, see if she's up for a chat. Well, I'll go with you. Actually, despite popular opinion, you really can't beat the truth out of someone. Instead of using violence, Veronica gets really creative and clever with the way that she solves her cases. At the resolution of each show, the viewer is left with this sense of poetic justice. An example of this poetic justice is uh, when Veronica kind of gets back at her boyfriend Troy, who she finds out later on was sort of scamming her the whole time. Troy, what's with this girl calling me? You gave her my number? Oh, well, what girl? Some girl named Veronica. You didn't tell her you'd be seeing me soon, did you? She caught me off guard. What was I supposed to do? Sorry we didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Just wanted to wish you good luck at your new school and leave you something to remember me by. It took me a while to figure out where you stashed the steroids, but there was only one place you were alone, right? In case you're wondering, the former contents of the package are somewhere between my toilet and the Pacific Ocean. Say hi to Shauna for me. She sounds like a keeper. The show is of course not without its faults. It has some problematic portrayals of racism and classism, but it does actually acknowledge those things and talks about them throughout the show. This is in comparison to most mainstream television shows that don't even really acknowledge that racism or classism exists. I think that even though it, it talks about it in a sort of problematic way, just having that on our television screens, I think, is a step towards making our TV programs more anti-racist, more anti-classist. When I first started watching the show, we were introduced to the local Latino biker gang, and I was really fearful that the writers were going to feed into the very racist stereotypes, which they kind of did. But the writers also took the main leader of the gang and sort of humanized him, really showed a bit of his backstory and made the audience sympathetic and created a very complex character. There are also other moments in the show where the writers 
gave us very subtle and interesting and also humorous ways of exposing racism that you don't often think about. And you almost never see that on TV. We're going to have to start searching the lockers. Mm. Immediately. You want to save yourself some time? Start with hers. We all saw her lurking around. Lurking? Uh, you mean standing while black? Sexual violence is a reoccurring theme throughout all three seasons of the show. I think that, for the most part, the, the writers did a really, really terrible job of dealing with uh, rape and abuse. And because of that, I'm going to dedicate a whole other video blog to it because I think that it really needs to be exposed just how important it is to deal with sexual violence in a healthy manner on television. Overall, I really, really like the show. I would highly recommend seasons one and two. I think that there's a lot of really great things about it as far as the complexity of characters, it's entertaining and witty, it's really fun to watch. Veronica's relationship with her father is totally worth watching because they are really funny, but it's also this mutual love and respect that they have for one another. And there's a lot of really progressive values that the show offers, and I think that that's fairly rare to see on TV. That said, I'm going to leave you with this clip that I think is wonderfully subtle. Wow, that's some cake. Isn't it though? I love it. Ever notice how everything you make just tends to lean a little to the left? I do that on purpose. Mm.